Fabrizio Romano has come out on a few reports and said Tottenham are looking to sign and are interested in Spanish midfielder Danny Olmo, who plays for RB Leipzig. We're going to be speaking about the latest links linking Ollie Watkins to Tottenham. Make sure you go down, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and make sure you drop a like on the video if you are new around here. Now, we'll start with Danny Olmo. Interesting one, this. Interesting one. Had a couple of injuries last season. Only played 21 of the 34 Bundesliga games. 26 years of age. Spanish international. Nine goal contributions in the 21 games. Contract expires June 30th, 2027. Been at Leipzig now for, you know, coming up to five years. He's been linked to a transfer to Bayern Munich. Tottenham, he can play in the number 10. He can play left wing. He can play right wing. He's actually got some relatively good numbers while he's been at Leipzig overall. You know, 148 games, 29 goals, 34 assists. They've signed him from, you know, Dynamo Zagreb. He's got, you know, a number of trophies under his belt. He's won a couple of trophies with Leipzig, believe it or not. You know, the German Cup. I believe he's won it twice. He won. He's got a hat-trick against Bayern Munich in the first game of the season, which was essentially the German charity shield. He's won a Nations League with Spain. He's won five titles with, with Dynamo Zagreb in Croatia. His stats are very, very, very good. And I know you're thinking, Henry, there's going to be a but here. Now, when it comes to the but, my main concern is, is Danny Olmo an Ange type of player? Does he have the blistering pace that we are so reliant on? You know, right-footed, contract expires June, 20, uh, June 30th, 2027. Apparently, it has a release clause. He's valued at 50 million euros according to transfer market. I think, personally, he would be a great, great, great signing for us. You know, when you look at Tottenham last season, in the games where we didn't have Madison, we we kind of lacked someone to play that killer pass in the final third. Now, Daniel Meyer and Madison are very, very different players, you know, but we do need more competition for that for that area. Dan Kulisevsky looks like he's secondary position now is probably going to be the number nine role. He's played there a couple of times since Richarlison's been out. So he might not necessarily be Madison's backup number 10. You've obviously got the likes of Jamie Donnelly, who just won the Premier League too with with, with a lot of the youngsters, who looks an absolute gem in what we've got coming through the ranks. Other than that, you've got Giovanni Lo Celso, who can play the number 10 role. He's been uh, linked to a move away. Is Danny Olmo going to be the guy Tottenham look to bring in? Well, I, I, I've been saying this now, and I know a few other guys on here have been saying it, that I believe Tottenham, as an absolute maximum, are going to go out and spend, and uh, this is pushing every boundary. You're looking at probably 120 million net spend. Um, I don't think Tottenham are going to do 50, 60, 70 million pounds on that unless the person uh, who we're going to do that on is going to be starting. Does Danny Almo start week in, week out? I'm not so sure. Now, he does have a release clause of £51 million, which can be only activated before July 15th. Now, of course, the Euros, he will be, uh, I believe he's been called up for the Spanish national team. So the likelihood is if we're going to sign Danny Almo, it needs to be sharpish. If we're going to trigger that release clause and pay the £51 million, it needs to be soon. Very, 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 very soon. Now, you know, we're being linked with a number of forwards, you know, from Luis Openda, almost Leipzig uh, teammate, Ollie Watkins. Calvert-Lewin is now being linked. You know, Dominic Solanke, Ivan Tony, Santiago Jimenez, whoever the number nine we're going to bring in, we, ha we have to have a lot of creativity around them, not necessarily reliant on... James Madison and Human Son to kind of be there. We, we we need a little bit more than that um, for me personally. I don't know what you guys kind of feel down below. I'd be interested. I think that we are right now in a very, very good position. We're going in the Europa League. We, we're going to have games coming thick and fast. It gives Ange Postacoglu 
more games to get he, his system across to build the relationships further. Danny Olmo, though, does tick a lot of the boxes for me. And I would be very, 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 very happy if Danny Olmo was to come in. You know, you could have a James Madison and Olmo and Jamie Donnelly find out for that number 10 role. Well, it will probably be Madison and Olmo and then Donnelly, you know, in there for squad depth. Out on the right, you've got Brendan Johnson. On the left, you've got Human Son, the number nine to come in. And then you need probably a little bit more depth around the forwards. The, the defensive, other than the backup left back, I think we're pretty much good to go. You've got four centre-backs of Phillips, Van der Ven, Romero, you know, and Radu Dragusin. You've got Vicario in the net. We probably need a backup right back as well because it looks like Emerson Royale is going to be leaving this summer. There is so much transfer rumours, news, clues, speculation. No player in this team is safe other than the obvious ones of Son, Madison, Van der Ven, Romero, Destiny, Dogi, and Poro, and, the, and Vicario. Everyone else seems to be in the news. Every other player seems to be in the news, whether it's Pierre Amor Hoiberg, Giovanni Lo Celso, this player, that player. There is so many rumours around our current players in our team. It's absolutely insane. Another player we're being heavily linked to now, and I don't necessarily think this one is realistic, is Ollie Watkins. He's a name that seems to be flying about today. You know, is Ollie Watkins going to leave? Is Ollie Watkins going to leave Aston Villa to join Tottenham? In my opinion, probably not. You know, they've just got back into the Champions League for the first time in God knows how long. He's the main man in the new Emery side that, in my opinion, did punch above its weight last season. They got back into the Champions League. It would take a monumental bid, monumental bid from Tottenham to get him out. You're looking at 80 to 100 million pounds. I don't necessarily think Ollie Watkins would want to want to, want to join Spurs. You know, he's a, he's got a good gig at Aston Villa. There's other strikers out there that, for me, are better fits and are more likely to come. Not necessarily better fits, but are more likely to join Spurs. You got a, you got a Santiago Jimenez at you know the likes of Feyenoord. Now that Arnie Slot is no longer there, they're going to appoint their new manager. I'm not necessarily sure if if a Tottenham come in with a 45, 50 million pound bid, are Feyenoord in a financial and strong enough position to say to turn that down? There's not a huge amount of money in the era of EC. It's kind of monopolized by PSV, IX, and Feyenoord. And, you know, in the last four or five years, we've seen different teams win the league. You know, Feyenoord, PSV, and IX have all won it in the last five years. So do do they potentially take that money and, and try and strengthen against their rivals? For me, I don't see I don't see personally a Ollie Watkins joining Spurs. However, Santiago Jimenez for me is a lot more realistic, a hell of a lot more realistic. He he ticks all the boxes, as well as, I know everyone seems to be turning up their nose to a Dominic Solanke. Everyone seems to be turning their nose up to it. I don't see the downside. I really do not see the downside in bringing in a Dominic Solanke, who scored 19 Premier League goals last season. You know, scored a lot more goals than most of the Tottenham players. It's homegrown. And, and, and this is another thing. We have got a homegrown problem coming our way. And no one seems to be speaking about it. If Ryan Sessionong's going to go, if Ollie Skip's going to go, if Ben Davis is being linked to the move away, if Joe Roden's probably going to join Leeds, if Jed Spence is going to go, we are losing a lot of homegrown players. You know, Brandon Austin, he's probably going to be leaving. Or uh, one of the other goalkeepers. We're going to have to promote probably five, six, seven players. From the young, from the younger um, lot into our team, you know. Right now we are, we're in a good position. We're building under Ange Postecoglou. We're, we're taking steps in the right direction for me. And it's now about: Do we want to close the gap between where we are and where Arsenal and Manchester City and Liverpool and Villa are? And how do we do that by bringing in quality? But we've also got to bring in homegrown quality. Conor Gallagher being Heavily linked to the move away uh, to to Tottenham. I was one of these guys that was massively, massively against it. Massively, massively against it at first. I didn't. I, I wasn't a fan of his. I thought he was very overrated. Now I look at Hoiberg could be leaving. 
Is he going to be joining Juventus now? Who knows now that Thiago Motta is there and he's looking for more possession-based players. If it was Allegri, I think he would slot in like a glove, fit like a glove. Now that that's changed, where is Hoiberg going to go? Where is Giovanni Lo Celso going to go? Basuma's linked to the move away. You know, I, I wouldn't be disappointed if Tottenham brought in Gallagher. Just my assumption, just my opinion, I wouldn't be disappointed. I think he ticks a lot of the boxes. You know, only a year left on his contract. Had a very, very good season at Chelsea. Chelsea are all over the place in terms of their man manager merry-go-round. 24 years of age. Can play central midfield, defensive midfield, attacking midfield. You know, I, I, I don't see a downside to bringing in Conor Gallagher right now into the Spurs, <clears throat> the Spurs team. When you know he's got one year left on his contract, could probably pick him up for 25, 30 mil. Let me know your thoughts down below on Romano's uh, comments regarding Danny Olmo, Ollie Watkins, Lynx, and Conor Gallagher. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.